We've been biotechnologically modifying crops by selective breeding for 10,000 years. We are using, we used some pretty crude tools in the 90s. We now have very explicit tools now, and there's risk with every change we make, whether it's crossbreeding a plant, whether it's hybridizing a plant. Hybrid corn was a disruption in agricultural production in the 1920s and 30s. The notion that you couldn't save your seed corn from hybrid corn and grow them the next year because they wouldn't, they're F2 hybrids, they won't produce. So that was just an absolute uh, abomination until the benefits of hybrid corn emerged in the producers, for the producers. So we are facing an opportunity and a challenge with understanding and communicating the benefits and risk and managing the benefits and risk I think Dr. Merrigan addressed this in the previous panel, of this new technology, CRISPR technology among others, of gene editing. We're not gonna be able to create a crop that can grow food without water. That's just silly. Or with, uh, without nutrients, that's just silly. But what we can do is we can increase disease resistance, we can increase drought resistance so that our yield penalties are less. We can do things on the margin that take the edge off the risk of the producers. But let's go back to this issue also of the, of the small scale producer in Eastern Africa. If we can take her farm, it's almost always her, if we can take her two hectares of corn and we can double her yield, double her yield, we have made her now from trans transition from a subsistence producer to an economic marketplace dis uh, producer, which means she has extra. Mm -hmm. extra so that her children can go to school, extra that she, so she can buy equipment, irrigation equipment perhaps, or better heating for a different stove for cooking in the house. That's the way you move people from with using land-based prosperity from poverty to prosperity from the land. You don't do it by vilifying the technology in the toolbox. The toolbox is just a toolbox. A hammer is an incredibly good tool or a weapon, depending on how it's used. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think I think that's right. Uh, you know, just just as the, the the tools that were fashioned in the first generation of agricultural biotechnology were were pretty coarse, pretty yep. pretty crude. So is the policy framework that we erected around it, and still is. CRISPR's come along, but it's operating fundamentally in that same dilapidated, outmoded, um, to me, underregulated uh, policy environment. Uh, that I think has led to some unnecessary uh, debates, problems, questions about technologies that could be resolved, uh, maybe not to everyone's satisfaction, if we had, uh, um, I, I think, uh, the regulatory framework we need for agricultural biotechnology. You know, the debate of, of recent years has been over a, a very narrow question, fundamentally, of whether you should label. Um, but to me, the deeper question is, uh, are, are we really being as responsible as we need to be, knowing that these technologies are coming online. And uh, f from, from what we look at at, uh, at Environmental Working Group, we, we, we've concluded that the, the regulatory system really comes up short. Uh, but it's, uh, there's, there's not much support right now for, for upgrading it in a significant way. But it's a new world, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very new world. To, to that point, uh, obviously we have a, a lot of members who are um, producing biotechnology, crops from biotechnology. We have a lot of members who aren't producing crops from biotechnology. Um, but, and it's, it, there's been a lot of environmental benefits that have come as a result of, of biotech. We're, we're applying uh, a different softer chemicals than we used to. We're applying uh, lower levels of, of, of lots of them. But, it, and the science continually is, is, is pretty conclusive that biotechnology is, is crops produced with biotechnology are just as safe as those that are not produced with biotechnology. But I think we spend a lot of time in that space, and, and for good reason, safety is important, and I'm, and I'm glad we re, re, reiterate that message. But something that's, that's really important that gets lost in that is all the opportunity to solve issues that are still out there that we haven't been able to fix with other technologies or with other practices. Um, I'll give the example of papayas in Hawaii that were almost wiped out before biotechnology, uh, an event or allowed that to uh, to continue to grow to uh, fight off the sort of the natural uh, bug in, and and uh, sort of uh, pressures it was under, or or think about oranges in Florida that are currently under significant pressure uh, because of citrus screening. We've tried the tools that we already have, 
certainly farmers are, they, they're very aware of the tools that they have at their disposal. Uh, and they've been trying them on their own. They've been funding research at their universities. We've, we've certainly been trying. So why not look at this as new technology as a means to, uh, to solve some of these longstanding issues that, that, we've ha that we have?